Hi, I'm Graham, and welcome back to Man vs Film. This is going to be a top 10 of movies that you can watch on Amazon Prime US for the month of July 2018. So let's get started. Number 10, Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans. After Katrina, Police Sergeant Terence McDonough rescues a prisoner, hurts his back in the process, and earns a promotion to lieutenant, plus an addiction to cocaine and painkillers. Six months later, a family is murdered over drugs and Terence runs the investigation. Nicolas Cage is one of those actors that you really are like or you can't stand. When he's on form and he does something really terrific, it can be immensely watchable. And here he has a fantastic character, this really dodgy police officer who is into drugs, extortion, blackmail, all kinds of things that he shouldn't be doing while still trying to solve crimes at the same time. It is ridiculous, but it's very fun with the way it goes about its business. It's very playful, and if you haven't seen it, it is a really good Nicolas Cage movie. Number nine, Drop Zone. A team of skydiving crooks led by Busey specialise in landing on police roofs and breaking in so their evil computer nerd can steal undercover agents' files and sell them to drug lords. Federal Marshal Snipes lost a brother to this crew and learned skydiving with the help of a tough but lovable instructor. All through the 90s you seem to get these movies that were similar plots. You had Armageddon and Deep Impact, you had Volcano and Dante's Peak, big budget movies that came out in the cinema to do battle over our money. But there were some other compromises as well. They had Terminal Velocity and Drop Zone. Two movies that were similarly situated in the world of skydiving and crime. This one starred Wesley Snipes and was pretty fun. The other one was good as well and starred Charlie Sheen. But it's pretty much a rip-off of kind of Point Break. Not as good as that, but we've got Busey back again. We have uh, Snipes doing some pretty good skydiving stunts. Some good action. It's fun. It's definitely check your brain at the door and you'll enjoy it. Number eight, Shutter Island. US Marshal Teddy Daniels is assigned to investigate the disappearance of a patient from Boston's Shutter Island Hospital. He's been pushing for an assignment on the island for personal reasons, but before long he wonders whether he hasn't brought there as part of a twisted plot by hospital doctors whose radical treatments range from unethical to illegal to downright sinister. This is one of these movies that took me a couple of watches to really appreciate the effort of filmmaking that has gone on here. And initially, I didn't like this movie, and then after my second rewatch, I absolutely adored it. Everything comes together, the movie changes the second time round watching it, knowing everything that is going to play out. On a second watch, some of the weirdness makes a little bit more sense than it did. It's effective, it looks fantastic, it keeps you on the edge of the seat, and it is a pretty terrific movie. Number seven, Braven. Joe Braven is a logging company owner who lives with his family in Canada. Joe's father is suffering from dementia. Joe and his father decide to go up to their secluded log cabin to have a heart to heart where they run into trouble from a drug dealer who wants to use Joe's business as a front for his cocaine operation. Jason Momoa stars in this pretty basic action thriller. But it does the basics extremely well. We have some ridiculously fun action of a man pushed too far and pushing back against these hardened criminals and he does it with extreme prejudice. You throw in his father who is kind of capable but still has Alzheimer's and his daughter who has stowed away um, who is also in peril and you have a pretty fun thriller. It's not something that you're going to revisit. It's not something that's completely deep. It's just a fun entertaining watch. Number six, Johnny B. Good. It's recruiting time and despite being short and scrawny, Johnny Walker is America's hottest young football prospect. His dilemma, should he take one of the many offers from college talent scouts or should he attend the local state college with his girlfriend and give up his football career? Anthony Michael Hall stars alongside Uma Thurman in this movie that came out in 1988 and it's one that I have went back to several times because it's just fun. Robert Downey Jr. also stars in this and it is a product of its time. It's one of those high school movies that came out in the late 80s and it has a little bit to say, not too much, but it's more just about the fun, the excess that this guy goes to and sees all these colleges just trying to throw money at him for him to go there and the juxtaposition of him having to decide between this lavish lifestyle 
or staying with his girlfriend in an undecided future. Number five, Mouse Hunt. A family film about a mouse that lives in an old house where the generic owner dies and Ernie and Lars have plans for. But they have trouble getting rid of the mouse. Imagine Home Alone only Kevin as a mouse. This is his domain, it's where he's lived for the longest time. You get these two imbeciles in that want to renovate, tear it up, and they have a battle with this mouse. They just can't stop it. It's silly, but it's incredibly fun. You have the actors who are really hamming it up pantomime style against this mouse and destroying the house that they want to restore. It's incredibly fun. It's incredibly silly. And if you have any kids, they are going to get a greatest time out of this movie. It's it's well worth checking out. Number four, The Running Man. Ben Richards is an innocent man who is sentenced to The Running Man game show, a futuristic audience participation capital punishment television show. While Ben is running from champions with chainsaws and sharpened hockey sticks, the host is busy with calls to the network about ratings. A movie that's probably more pertinent now than it was when it came out and I think you know, we're pretty close to actually getting something as ridiculous as this on TV. This is an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and it is a fantastic one at that. This is at his, at his peak where he has the one-liners down, he has the ridiculous action, he is just all about killing these guys that are trying to kill him. It's simple, but it's an exciting plot. Number three, The Burbs. Ray Peterson takes a week off from work just to walk around in pyjamas all day, read the newspaper and lay low. However, Petersons have some very peculiar neighbours. In fact, he has no normal neighbours, but one neighbour in particular is especially strange. Therefore, Peterson and the other neighbours decide to investigate what's wrong with the Clopex, and the relaxing week off from work becomes something far from relaxing. I watched The Burbs last year and I loved it. In fact, I watched it again and again and again, this is a movie that I hadn't seen for a number of years and just watching it, watching how all the characters interplay, watching how the story comes together, how it's set up, the jokes that are there that you just don't notice the first time around. This is a masterpiece of comedy movie making. It's a movie that I really wish I had went back to sooner than I had. It's something I'm really thinking about checking out pretty soon again because I love the characters, I love the way they interact, the comedy is pretty funny and it's just a really fun, well-made tale. Number two, Lady Bird. Christine Lady Bird McPherson is a high school senior from the wrong side of the tracks. She longs for adventure, sophistication and opportunity, but finds none of that in her Sacramento Catholic High School. Nominated for the Best Picture Oscar is Lady Bird. Greta Gerwig's directorial debut it stars Shasha Ronan as the titular character of Lady Bird and it's basically just a coming of age story of someone trying to find their place in the world butting heads against everybody that's trying to help her out. It's one of those movies that doesn't set a foot wrong. It's perfect from start to finish. It doesn't do anything outstanding but it does everything well. And it's a great tale and something that you'll probably find something that you can attune to in it. Number one, The Disaster Artist. Aspiring actor Greg Sestero befriends eccentric Tommy Wiseau and the two travel to LA and when Hollywood rejects them, Tommy decides to write, direct, produce and star in his own movie. That movie is The Room, which has attained cult status as the Citizen Kane of bad movies. I've never seen The Room, but that didn't stop me from going to see The Disaster Artist and I so glad that I did because I found a movie that was all about this friendship and all about the absurdity of excess. Just because you can do things doesn't mean that you should, not without proper training or with people there to help you with good advice. And Tommy Wiseau is a character who is larger than life, played by James Franco here, and a terrific performance. It's so funny, so heartfelt, and it's just a movie that I can't give enough superlatives to. It is well worth your time. If you missed it in the cinema, check it out. I think you're going to love this one. So there we have it. 10 movies for Amazon Prime US for the month of July 2018. I hope you find something there that you haven't seen before. Something that you can enjoy. And if there's something that I missed off my list, let me know in the comment box below. And I'll be sure to check it out for next month's list. Thanks for watching.